So guys, we have massive news. We're jumping right into this one, but I need you to do three things immediately before Donald Trump gets his way. As I've been saying, they are trying to shut this channel down. Donald Trump and his campaign and all of that. So I need you to one, hit that like and subscribe button. Watch the entire runtime of the video because that's how you make it go viral. And frankly, I'm going to say this, you spit in Donald Trump's face by making this one go viral. And three, you watch all of our content going forward because what it does is it exposes Donald on a day where Jack Smith just put the screws to him in canon, fired up, firings, all of this happening, replacements. This is a big, big deal, and it spells the end of canon incoming and the rise of a new opportunity to hold Donald Trump to account because they were waiting for canon to make a big mistake and screw herself and screw Donnie, and that's what happened just five minutes ago. Reflected a, quote, fundamentally flawed understanding of the case before her that has, quote, no basis in law or fact. With us now, CNN senior legal analyst, former U.S. Assistant U.S. Attorney for the Southern District of New York, Ellie Honig. Ellie, this has to do, Judge Eileen Cannon asked both the prosecution and the defense to write hypothetical jury instructions on the issue of whether the Mar-a-Lago documents were in fact personal property, Donald Trump's property. In the filing, Judge, uh, the special counsel Jack Smith wrote, quote, the court should be aware at the outset that the Trump's entire effort to rely on the PRA, the Presidential Records Act, is not based on any facts. It is a post hoc justification that was concocted more than a year after he left the White House. The special counsel also writes there is no basis in law or fact for that legal presumption, and the court should reject Trump's effort to invent one as a vehicle to inject the Presidential Records Act into this case. What do you see there, Ellie? Well, John, Jack Smith's frustration really just jumps off the page in this brief. That, by the way, classifies as a prosecutorial temper tantrum. I mean, usually prosecutors are very just the facts, very sort of deferential to a judge. And here we see Jack Smith really expressing his frustration at the judge. And the source of his frustration is that Judge Cannon has expressed a real willingness to entertain and perhaps introduce to the jury this defense that Donald Trump has raised based on the Presidential Records Act. And Jack Smith's response, and we can break it down a bit more as we go ahead here, but his response basically boils down to it's a falsity. As a matter of fact, this never happened. Trump never properly designated the documents. And second of all, even if he had, it fails legally. So Jack Smith has had it, and you can sense that in this brief. And in asking in this brief for the judge to rule specifically on this matter now, why is that significant? So this is a really important point. What Jack Smith says in this brief is, if you're going to rule against us, if you're going to entertain this defense and potentially instruct the jury on this defense, we need to know now because we may well appeal you. He's going to appeal if he loses, but he's being polite about it. He says, we may well appeal you. And there's a really important reason for that, John. Once a case goes to a jury, even if the jury gets legally flawed instructions, when the jury comes back, if they come back with an acquittal, with a not guilty verdict, there's nothing a prosecutor can do. A prosecutor cannot appeal a not guilty verdict. So what Jack Smith is saying here is, we're worried that you may make a mistake here that may lead to a not guilty verdict, and then there'll be nothing we can do. So if you're gonna do this, tell us now and we'll appeal you. Does it stop with the idea of keeping the door open for an appeal, or is this also possibly a first step in a real long shot effort to get her removed from the case. <laughs> yeah, so that's possible. It is extraordinarily rare, but there is a procedure for this and it can happen sometimes where prosecutors will ask a judge or will ask an appeals court to remove a federal judge from a case. Now you have to be really careful about when and why you do that as a federal prosecutor. First of all, it's a pretty precipitous move. Second of all, if you lose, you have a kind of awkward scenario where you've asked the judge to be kicked off and then they're not. Uh, it's supposed to be reserved for cases where the judge has made repeated errors that evince some sort of bias. Now, Judge Cannon did rule in favor of Donald Trump before this case was indicted. You'll remember the special master issue and she got reversed by the Court of Appeals there. And so it's possible, I think it's unlikely, but possible mm -hmm. that if the judge rules against DOJ here, they may take that sort of extreme step of asking her to step aside. Ellie Honig, great to see you. And again, we're gonna talk much more about this. This has to do with the claim that these records that were at Mar-a-Lago were personal 
property, Trump argues, just because he had them there, they were personal property. Uh, Ellie Honig, great right. to see you this morning. Much more to discuss. Language you can kind of read mm -hmm. the frustration. It's as if he's saying, come on. Like, no one takes this seriously. How can you make us file something like this? What do you read in here? Look, it's not unusual for a judge to ask the parties for proposed jury instructions before a trial. But what is unusual is she posed two hypothetical scenarios, both of which have no basis in the law. She's trying to inject the Presidential Records Act, which Donald Trump is not charged with violating the Presidential Records Act. He's charged with a law, the Espionage Act, that has been in existence for 100 years. And there are many jury instructions that that are samples or examples that she could have drawn from, but none look anything like the hypotheticals that she is proposing. And in both scenarios, she's essentially saying to the jury that this Donald Trump can decide whether he can uh, possess these highly classified documents. And so in either scenario, there's no way that you would convict him. And so Jack Smith is frustrated saying, that's not the law here. And why are we instruct? Why are you proposing that we give an unlawful instruction to the jury? And so he's asking her to rule one way or the other because he's clearly going to. He's setting this up for an appeal. And I think I, although he doesn't say it in his motion, his frustration indicates to me that he is getting ready to ask that she be recused from this case. This is just one of a series of strange, unlawful, whether it's orders or decisions that she has made that has made legal analysts across the country scratch their heads because they make no sense. They don't r look anything like what people are used to or what's in the law. And so she's inexperienced. She is not a judge who's been around for a long time. And I think her inexperience is really showing because she's just doing things that, that have no basis in the law. And play this, play that out for us. If he's setting up for an appeal, if you, the simmering frustration is seen and you see that kind of potentially leading for him asking for her to be recused, how, how what does that do to this entire process? So it obviously will delay it because he would, uh, Jack Smith would file a writ of mandamus with the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals. And that obviously takes time. But although there is a trial date set for May, there is no scenario in which this trial will go in May because there are so many rulings that this judge still has not ruled on, including the Classified Information Procedures Act and other rulings that just are are foundational and need to be ruled upon. So this is this case is not going anytime in the near future anyway, although Judge Cannon has not said that, nor has she put a more a future trial date on the calendar. So I think Jack Smith is not worried, I would assume, about the fact that his appeal will delay things. And also look, he has no choice at this point because once a juror a jury is sworn, something called jeopardy attaches, which means that that if they if she does give these erroneous instructions and they acquit he can't appeal that double jeopardy will apply and th and that's the case is over forever. So this is the kind of issue that you can't appeal later. So it has to happen now. And these instructions are tailored so much in favor of Trump and for an acquittal that Jack Smith would have no choice but to appeal this now. It's almost an act of legal desperation now. He's got to do it now or never. Kate, you wanted to ask about the New York criminal case. Just leaning on your experience, when it comes to this expanded gag order and Donald Trump kind of calling out the judge on Truth Social yesterday, calling him a corrupt New York judge, saying there's virtually never been a more conflicted judge than this one. You have been before this judge. You've been before Mershon before. You know this judge. How does he operate in a courtroom? He's a very down the middle judge. You, you, nobody would say he's pro defense or pro prosecution. He's like a judge's judge, right? He calls balls and strikes. He's very measured. He's not one to lose his temper. He's not one to be 
friendly with people. He just, he comes in and he does his job and he does it in a kind of understated way, yet he also keeps con very tight control of his courtroom. And so he is someone, he, he's the kind of judge you'd want on a case like this. So to call him biased, to call him uh, somebody who's partisan, that is not something that those of us who have appeared before him for years, many years, would ever say about this judge. You could say that about some other judges, but this is not that kind of judge. Karen Freeman, I feel great to have you on this morning. Thanks so much. Uh, dealing with Judge Cannon uh, and the documents case. Um, explain what these jury instructions mean. And if I'm understanding this correctly, she's actually putting Jack Smith in an untenable position here. Let jurors view classified documents or basically give them instructions that would essentially acquit Trump because he would be able to claim all of these documents were either personal or he has the purview to decide what they are. Well, the reason this is so legally wrong is that the two options that she asked Jack Smith and Donald Trump to address both um, have the same faulty legal premise, which is that these documents can be de um, determined under the Presidential Records Act to be personal versus governmental documents. That, that alone is very questionable that a president has that unilateral power. But the, the real problem with both option A and option B is that the Presidential Records Act is irrelevant. The, the president, um, the former president, is not being charged with a violation of the Presidential Records Act. He's being charged with keeping classified information national defense information at Mar-a-Lago and obstruction of justice. That has nothing to do with the Presidential Records Act. So this is like saying, I'd like you to address um, uh, Jack Smith. I'd like you to address the jury um, charge with respect to whether um, and how the earth is flat. That's option A. And then in option B, I want you to address how um, the jury should consider how the earth is square. Um, both of those are absurd. Um, and so they're legally just fundamentally wrong. There are a number of other things that are that are wrong with your two options. Um, and so the real issue here, the sort of big picture issue is, what is it going to take to tee up this case so that Jack Smith can get to the 11th Circuit? I think it is absolutely beyond question at this point that this judge is um, is both way too inexperienced for this case and has shown her partisanship. She has been reversed twice by the 11th Circuit in strong language, and she really didn't learn her lesson. I and mean, she has continued to do the same thing. This, this order that came out yesterday is the kind of thing that I have never seen. I have never seen sort of something that's so completely off the wall, both legally and even the way it's presented. So the issue is sort of, is Jack Smith going to sort of figure out how to get this to the 11th Circuit and take his shot at both getting her reversed and getting her removed?